The major redesign of a popular vehicle is stressful work. For Toyota engineers and designers, the job was simple. Do not mess up the goodwill Toyota has earned since Tacoma midsize pickup went on sale in America in 1995, while making the truck a fierce competitor in a modern market. Today, we'll try to assess how wise of a decision it was to introduce a turbocharged engine in the Tacoma for the first time since its inception, and whether future owners should be concerned about the reliability of this legendary model. This is The Long Last Channel, and let's take a ride. Toyota has always been synonymous with reliability, and its reputation for robust vehicles owes much to its indestructible pickups. For example, Europe and Asia adore the Hilux, while Africa and the Middle East still can't part with the Land Cruiser pickups. In America, everyone worships the Tacoma. Until now, the leadership of this model in the midsize pickup segment has been undisputed. However, competitors aren't standing still. They offer original designs, new powerful engines, improved user-friendly electronics, and good packages. Against their backdrop, the third-generation Tacoma indeed looked more ancient. Engineers faced a tough task, because at a time when their competitors had the chance to make mistakes, the new Tacoma being the segment leader simply couldn't afford that. In all presentations, we see that Toyota presents the new turbocharged engine T24A FTS as a more fuel-efficient and powerful alternative to the previous 3.5-liter engine with the Index 2 GRFKS. Nevertheless, it is important to be objective because upon closer comparison of the two Tacomas, the fuel economy improvement of 2 MPG doesn't seem all that impressive. Also, the difference in acceleration by one second won't necessarily be something you'll feel. The top versions with the iForce Max engine will undoubtedly outperform the base version in power and efficiency, as it is a hybrid, but it's crucial to understand that not everyone will purchase the Trail Hunter. So why opt for turbo? You don't need to be an expert to understand that a smaller displacement and additional equipment increase thermal load and complicate the unit. Toyota prefers not to talk about it, but it all comes down to environmental standards. Due to these standards, the company's engineers must not only think about the reliability of the unit, but also anticipate in advance to ensure the engine complies with environmental norms. Unfortunately, this is a challenge that all car manufacturers are currently facing. The new engine for Tacoma is designated as T24A, but we've known about it since 2021, when it was introduced in the Lexus NX350 and later implemented in various models of the brand. During the presentation, engineers emphasized that this engine is quite different from the standard T24A, boasting significant enhancements that enable it to handle heavy loads. The engine has been overhauled, with only 50% of components shared with the regular version found in the NX350. Engineers claim that the changes have affected both the block and the turbocharger, making these parts more robust and capable of withstanding substantial loads. Yet, we should understand that Toyota's goal is to convince us that the Taco remains as reliable with the new engine as it was before, while also becoming more powerful and fuel efficient. Only time will tell how durable the new generation will be, but we must face the facts adding a turbocharger to the engine doesn't make it more reliable. It's simply an additional component that may require attention and maintenance in the future, despite all the improvements. Now we can see that the engine block is entirely aluminum and it heats up to operating temperature instantly. This means that any overheating can occur very quickly and pose a fatal risk of damage. At the same time, credit must be given to Toyota's engineers because the main difference in this engine from its standard version is the cooling system. The intake cooling vents have been increased to three inches, which aligns more with a V8 engine's cooling system, and additional cooling for the turbocharger has been added. All of this gives hope that the engine and turbocharger will not overheat. So if you live in a warm climate, it's better not to make frequent short trips and not to leave the car idling for an extended period without movement. Your thermally loaded engine may not appreciate it. First and foremost, it's essential to understand that this is a 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder engine with a combined injection system combining direct and port fuel injection. The advantage of such engines is that they almost don't suffer from the carbon buildup issue. The injectors in the intake manifold prevent carbon from depositing on the valves. 
However, this engine involves an additional injector directly into the cylinder, which complicates the engine's design and contributes to carbon buildup on the injector itself. Toyota has stated that they adapted the engine for 87 octane gasoline, which is good news. Nevertheless, engineers did not explain how exactly they addressed this thing. It's also known that the injection system remains the same as in the regular T24A. This means it's better not to take risks since engines with combined injection systems don't tolerate low quality fuel. And it's preferable to use at least 89 octane gasoline. By using higher quality fuel, you can protect your injectors from carbon deposits and prevent the engine from experiencing excessive detonation. Therefore, in this case, a useful piece of advice might be to disregard the manufacturer's recommendations. A positive aspect of this engine is the absence of an EGR system, and this can indeed have a positive impact on longevity. Consequently, we'll have less carbon buildup in the intake manifold and lower temperature stress on the entire engine. The PCV system is present in this engine, but it typically doesn't cause significant issues. What may genuinely concern owners in the emissions control system is the catalytic converter. It's not the strongest element in the system, yet calling it weak would be inaccurate because in the previous generation, it generally didn't pose problems until around 150,000 miles. Therefore, if you are purchasing a vehicle for the long term, it's advisable to keep around $1,500 on hand by the time you reach this mileage, just in case. Not every manufacturer would want to complicate its production process to make an existing engine slightly more reliable. Nevertheless, Toyota can afford such expenses. We already know that other vehicles using the same but less robust T24A engine have been on the roads since 2021 and no systematic breakdowns have been identified so far. This should reassure future owners of the new Taco. The true success of this engine's design will be evident over time, despite that it can already be said unequivocally that the reliability potential of this engine is still much higher than that of many other turbocharged engines. The new Tacoma will be equipped with two transmission options, the automatic AL80 and the manual RC60. The bad news is that there is almost no information about this new transmission. The good news is that it will be an Aizen, and they already have experience building eight-speed transmissions for Toyota. However, the new automatic is unlikely to have anything in common with transmissions like the UA80 used on the Highlander, even though they were paired with the T24A engine that will be in the new Taco. Most likely, the AL80 is an upgraded version of the AC60F from the previous Tacoma, but with the addition of two extra gears, because the external layout is almost identical. This is another piece of good news, because this transmission is considered reliable. However, there are nuances that future owners should definitely be aware of. At 60,000 miles, the first oil change is necessary, and ideally, the oil and filters should be changed every 30,000 miles thereafter. It's crucial to warm up the transmission, especially if you live in an area with winters. One minute in the summer and seven to 10 minutes in the winter should be enough for all components inside to reach operating temperatures, and you'll be ready to start moving. Know that the worst thing you can do to your transmission in winter is to start spinning the wheels without warming it up. If you are smart enough to ignore these recommendations, soon your clutches and clutch drum will suffer, and the resulting debris will clog the torque converter lockup solenoid. This transmission is like a patient girlfriend, and if you don't pay attention to it, after some time, you'll get a serious quarrel, in our case, an expensive repair. With proper care, these transmissions can easily last for 250,000 miles. According to Toyota, only 5% of people choose the Taco with a manual transmission, and in our view, this is a significant mistake. The new six-speed manual transmission, RC60, is similar to the RC62 used in the previous generation. The difference is that RC60 employs intelligent manual transmission technology, which eliminates jerks during gear shifts. And it's truly an indestructible gearbox because some owners have driven up to 300,000 miles without even replacing the clutch, which is phenomenal. So if you need a reliable workhorse for many years, a manual transmission would be an ideal choice. Future Tacoma owners have something to celebrate as drum brakes are now a thing of the past. All trim levels will exclusively feature disc brakes. 
The SR, Pre-Runner, and Extra Cab trims will retain leaf spring suspension, while others will have coil springs. Additionally, starting with the TRD off-road trim, the Tacoma will be equipped with a rear differential from the Toyota Tundra, enhancing its off-road reliability. The front suspension, much like in the third generation, is double wishbone, but even here, engineers found areas for improvement, with TRD trims receiving reinforced CV joints for off-road use. Overall, the previous generation's chassis was extremely reliable. The transfer case and differentials easily withstand 200,000 miles before the first oil change. Furthermore, if you plan to keep the vehicle longer, consider changing the oil in these components at least every 70,000 miles. According to some owners' reviews, even the tapered roller bearings can endure 300,000 miles of use. Coincidentally, competitors updated their models earlier than Toyota, creating an illusion that they are winning the battle for the customer. Nevertheless, as it turned out, this was a false impression. While Toyota did receive a new engine that raises some doubts, we must admit that we are simply wary of the combination of the words Turbo and Tacoma, something that we had never heard before. Otherwise, this vehicle almost has no weak points, and even with a turbocharged engine, its reliability rating should be considered extremely high. The ideal choice might be the TRD off-road trim with a manual transmission, as from this point onward, additional features and components are introduced that elevate your off-road capabilities to a new level, all while maintaining the renowned reliability of the Tacoma. Thank you for watching this video. If you are an owner of the 2.4 liter T24A engine and have experience owning the previous generations of the Taco, then we and the viewers of the channel would be interested to hear your opinion in the comments. Also, don't forget to mention the mileage on your vehicle. That's all for today. Bye, and see you on the roads.